Hey guys, so I started recording extremely late at night. It is like 4 a.m. and I have to go ahead and record some of these videos. So today I'm gonna to talk about how much does Magic the Gathering cost? Now that depends on what you wanna do in Magic the Gathering, so I'll go over various formats. In my opinion, drafting is actually the cheapest thing to initially go into. Now, continuing drafting does get expensive since you are paying $15 a draft and drafting on Magic Online is exceedingly expensive because in one night you might go ahead and do, you know, I don't know, four to five drafts, which is possible in Magic Online, which is not possible in Magic, physical Magic, right? At most, a store has two drafts a night and even that doesn't happen all the time. Now, Going to pre-release, I believe, is the best value for the time since you will be there for a very long time. Uh, casual format is pretty good. Uh, my local store has two pre-releases. Uh, it has the normal one with the bigger price payout and it has the casual one with a lower price payout but everyone gets two packs and it's meant for fun, right? It's not meant for you to be aggressive or win or any of, and I think pre-release as a general on a whole isn't meant to bring out the most competitive uh, nature in people. At least that's my opinion for pre-release. So drafting initially is the most inexpensive. It's gonna cost you $15 a draft. Let's say you do four drafts a month. It would be $60 a month and or hundred uh, $720 a year, which for a hobby, honestly, isn't that bad. Now, if you want to play standard, standard in my opinion is beyond expensive. It is, um, we're going to go to two set rotation, which are, I believe is kind of crazy, right? Like it's standard is already expensive, but it's going to get more expensive. And the decks that tend to do better, like Abzan and um, those decks, or more expensive and once they have more expensive cards that are going to rotate and plummet in price. So standard as a format is you're talking about a absent control deck or absent aggro deck at $400. At least that's what mine cost and mine doesn't have any fetch lands in it. So yeah, you're looking at, you can always play mono red burn for 50 to hundred dollars. And that's why I'm doing at F and M lion at uh, the FNM Hero, but at the same time, Mono Red Burn, I, I played it four or five times already and it gets really tedious. In another video this week, I'm going to talk about like 80% of my meta at my local game store being Mono Red Burn or some type of Burn Goblin variant. So yeah, that's kind of annoying and it is very actually easy to prepare for. There's a card that I went over that I'm going to go over this week at Common. I think it's called like Feast of the whatever, but it gains you 10 life if you have Ferocious on, and they Mono Red cannot really recover from that. Goblins can if you don't board wipe, but Mono Red not as much. Standard is the most expensive format. I don't suggest beginning in Standard unless I suggest drafting, getting a card basis, drafting for a few months, understanding the game, and then moving on to your Standard deck. Now, modern is in many ways cheaper than standard, uh, mainly because you don't have to transition every eight months or whatever, 10 months it is. And you your cards have value. And meaning that yes, they will be reprinted. Yes, uh, they might go down in value, but no, you're not going to, you can still always play them. So when I mean value, I mean playability value. Uh, you will never not, unless there's a banning, right? but that's true for any format, you never, you will always be able to play with those cards in modern and you will always be able to play your modern deck. Now your modern deck might not always be tier one. It might you know go up and down, but you will always have those cards and they can be moved onto other decks, unlike standard. Standard is just exceedingly expensive as a format. It is only going to get more expensive as a format. I, you know, it is the most popular format Yes, it is. I just don't see, I see the cost of a standard deck being more than a cost of a modern deck. And the fact that the modern deck 
has long-term value and better resale value and you're not always worried about rotation appeals, it should appeal to ma Magic players way more than a standard deck. Now, Legacy, I'm not even going to talk about because to me, Legacy is, uh, I don't, and I, I'll, I, if you guys know, I live in Houston, there are no Legacy games in Houston uh, outside of my friends. Like, there's just not. And then some guy will say, oh, well, this place has a Legacy tournament every once a month, win a Mox or something, or uh, win a uh, Legacy dual land. And yes, you might have a Legacy tournament maybe once a week, but like, how many people are going to show up for that tournament compared to Standard and Modern? Uh, I would imagine not that much, um, at least here. And yeah, I, I've been to stores all over. I've been to uh, Strike Zone. I've been to uh, DNA Comics. I've been to my friend's store. I've been to uh, Baytown. I've been to uh, Asgard Games. I've been to Third Coast. Yeah, they do kind of have Legacy once in a while, but ugh. Um, so I would say drafting, if you're a new player, drafting is the lowest cost of entry. And it would be, if I if I had to do FNM Hero again, I would have drafted instead of trying to make a standard deck. Because once you make that deck, it's kind of hard to get out of it. And, you know, the cards are mono red. Love the deck. I play all the time. But it just is so boring right now to play against. I guess it's boring because you're playing against other mono red decks right now. Um, and that might be the case. So there's... Ugh. Anyway, if you want to draft, it's about $60 a month. Uh, you can view that as like a video game a month. If you wanted to do standard, you got to view that as like a $400 investment that will deteriorate rapidly. So it's not like golf clubs or... It's more like a membership. If you view it as a membership to like Costco or something and you just pay the $400 for the membership and then the membership expires and then you have to pay another $400, that's kind of how I would view standard. Modern would be like a lifetime membership. You just pay a one-time fee and then you get you know to play modern forever. So that's how I would view it as modern decks are not more expensive than standard decks in my opinion. Um, and they have a tremendous upside. Yeah, the Zendikar fetch lines didn't get reprinted. Yeah, some of the Snapcaster is $80. But once you buy that deck that you want to play and you have that place that have Snapcasters, it's I mean, you're good. They're not going to rotate out. And, like, unless they get banned, which would upset a lot of people, you will have them to play forever in that format. And that's, I believe, the best um, format right now is modern. There's a lot of people who play it. There's a lot of people who like it. And overall, the cost of modern is much cheaper than any of the other formats. Like, you can't always continue to draft. That's 720, 720, 720. Like every year, it'll be more expensive than just buying that modern deck for 720 and having it forever. So, yeah, I would say standard is the most expensive. Limited being sealed or draft is the second most expensive. And then you have um, obviously all of this depends on decks, right? What deck you're playing. Anyway, I uh, hopefully. I was helpful. Uh, I hope that was helpful. You guys leave in a comment below what, how much you're paying for what and you know what formats you're interested in. EDH is a format I can talk about a little later, but yeah. So leave a comment below if you, or any, if you guys have any questions about the cost, how to reduce the cost, etc., etc., like that. Bye, guys.